Morning guys, Lenny Reed, down about these products. I'm here with a buddy of mine, Jason. Jason, we're gonna we're gonna hide your last name. We're gonna hide your title. We're gonna hide where you work. Yeah. We're just gonna say that Jason, you know, comes from a a telephone booth, <laughs> dressed up as Superman once in a while. Yeah, you're gonna see what shirt I am. But he does work for an OEM. I do lean on him for some questions and answers from time to time. Um, he's he's been instrumental in like trying to get me to understand how OEMs think and how OEMs test and, and how they work. Uh, so I've always appreciated that and you've always had just a wealth of knowledge. So it was, I just felt it was gonna be a good idea to have you here and well, see if we can talk about pistons and flame fronts good. and stuff. Good to, good to be here. Uh, you know, as far as everything goes, it's kind of, it's kind of the last, last front for all this stuff is we have cylinder heads tech, technology basically where it's at. You have injectors wherever we want them. We have control systems. But what do, what do we really do on pistons? You know, and it's getting to be a more popular topic. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, I, in full, you know, I've been out of the horsepower game for a little bit, but all theories apply. So, you know, you, you kind of look at what we got in front of us and hopefully you can throw out some new questions to be tested on. There's, I mean, that's the whole thing. I've, I've always felt like OEMs get something to where it's, it's gas tested, mm -hmm. it's durable, it's past their destruction testing, mm -hmm. it's going to make it outside of warranty, it's gonna make it X amount of miles, X amount of hours. Yeah. And once it certifies, they can't really tweak that recipe. They, even if they come up with something better later, yeah. they can't tweak that recipe because then it would involve a bunch of cash and retesting that to recert. And it's already making money, so there's no reason to do that, right? Correct. So in the OEM world, why build 10 things to do 10 different jobs when you can build one thing to do 10 jobs? Yep. You know, so it's, it's always the simplicity factor of it. Um, n no piston, uh, barring probably this one, is, is new or exciting technology as far as everything goes. These have all been used in applications since the dawn of... I'll move it right now. Yeah, we'll, it. we'll move that one so it's a so limiting conversation. We got we got a couple of custom pistons, or Cummins pistons here. And these are just OEM cast pistons, um, steel ringlands. Both of them are going to be good to about eh, 12, 13, 1400 horse kind of thing. Yeah. Now, there's two different styles here. The the one in this hand, 0304, 305 horse motor, mm -hmm. 143 degree spray angle, yep. eight little tiny spray holes, but in the marine application, this nozzle became a sack nozzle, and it was a seven-hole nozzle, and they were like about 10 or 15% bigger from the OEM, mm -hmm. and the injector flowed, I wanna say it was like 30 cc's more at, on the uh, VL test, which is the big test. Okay. So, but these things coming from pickup trucks, um, this one flowed about the same as this one, but this one came in a three and a quarter horse motor, this one came in a 305 horse motor, and a lot of guys prefer this style of piston in limited air, like racing kind of applications, because yep. it does make more power. It does, and you can easily say that because with five spray, you know, with a five hole, you're you're really just putting fuel in there. You're and penetrating into the yeah. You're just you're just pushing deeper. fuel. So realistically, the the distance between here and here is much larger. So you're just throwing fuel in there and waiting for it to come back up and basically push against the head. You're and, and a lot of times with racing applications, you, it allows you to be way more forgivable on your tuning as far as timing goes. Okay. It's just, it's just a, a little bit of a, a simpler setup, so to speak. Yep. You know, and whereas the other one, um, the uh, step lip, uh, re-entrance style, I mean, you, you have to be a little more thoughtful about what you're doing. Gotcha. Now, that's not... That's not to say it doesn't make horsepower because we have an example that does make plenty of horsepower yep. in the re-entrant style step lip uh, application. But in this one, in the OEM world, basically what that does is it gives you a lot of resilience. So the 143 at eight holes, mm -hmm. and I'm, uh, VD, that was uh, VCO? That's VCO, yeah. VCO in yep. the stock ones. You know, you, you can say that the, the spray mist would be a lot more atomized and they're just trying to utilize 
uh, say, less fuel to do more work. So the injector or the spray angle could be doing more work with this piston versus the injector basically just being throwing fuel in there and just going for broke. Right. You know, and it's a little bit of a difference in the so, OEM world. And that's, we're going to talk, I've always looked at these two pistons and then instantly in my brain, since there is no combustion area in the, in the bottom of a Cummins head, it's just a flat area, right? Correct. So this truthfully is the combustion area. Yep. And with the with this one here, the area from that shoulder, the inner shoulders, mm -hmm. that's the only oxygen that we're actually trying to, because when the piston comes up all the way to TDC, and we're, we're trying, we've already yep. squeezed all the air out from basically this squish band mm -hmm. all the way out, that's taken up by steel. Yeah. So there's no oxygen available from outside of that area. Correct. So it makes it nice for durability because now we've got a huge, fat, heavy shoulder yep. that's going to absorb temperature, take a pounding when it comes to, and it's going to protect the top ring from cylinder yep. pressure. Yeah. So very durable. Mm -hmm. In a long-term testing, like this thing is going to be very robust. A lot, a lot of OEM engines outside the B-Series use something equivalent to that in the lower horsepower area when it comes to uh, automotive duty cycle. Okay. You know, because it is just a, a more robust design. So once the OEM basically builds their factory, you know, their factory fuel tuning, yep. that's just a simpler piston to run. It's durable. It's, you know, it, it checks all the boxes. Yeah. You know, whereas the other one's a little riskier, um, and the odd part is, is it comes in some very odd duty cycles that are either really low or really high. Okay. Which usually, in in my thought process, would tell me that their timing tables that they're trying to utilize to either accomplish emissions or survive at high timing, um, higher duty cycles. Gotcha. You know, so I mean, there, there could be a mix in there. So, this piston over here my simple brain like not engineer guy but my simple brain says the reason it works better in limited air applications not necessarily nitrous because that's a whole new bag yeah, right? that's a, yeah we can we can force all the nitrous we want in here and it's going to make up for what this piston's doing automatically yeah, yeah. but this piston is less durable because we've got less meat on the yep. shoulder. Yep. There's less mass to take thermal energy. Correct. There's less protecting the piston ring itself. Yeah. But we've got such a large surface area. There's mm -hmm. like 70% of my piston probably that is actually my, uh, my my expansion chamber for my for all my gas to happen. And I'm using oxygen from here clear over to here. Yep. Yep. So I've gained, you know, 20, 30 percent more surface area. Yeah. So theoretically, like my brain's always said, well, duh, this one's supposed to work better, but it offers less protection. Yeah. So and that's that's really why that one is better at RPM horsepower applications. Yep. And then when when EFI to, to kind of bring it down to a specific level, when EFI allowed us to start running higher RPM yep. in the 06s, that piston excelled because realistically at at higher RPMs with proper proper tuning, you can chase the flame front and you can utilize the frame, flame front so it's not as destructive, you know, just basically being, you're yep. using all the BTU available. Right. You know, instead of at RPM, so you can run your timing tables real big, so that way you can utilize, you know, everything. At, at RPM. At RPM. At high RPM. Yeah. At RPM, you know, but the downside being is that in some applications, um, you know, you get a lazy, you know, cold startup, and it's just, you know, I mean, you see the differences between the two. In a gotcha. high application, with this one, you see a nice, nice drivability, nice down low power, the other one, it's just a monster, you know. It's gotcha. going to be more for the off-idle, high RPM stuff where gotcha. it's going to truly excel. Gotcha. You know? And that, you know, even when it comes to, like, when you look at injector technology, eight holes, five holes, OEM versus OEM mm -hmm. in pickup truck applications, the eight holes, the the spray hole itself is about a thousandth of an inch smaller mm -hmm. because you've still got, you've got eight that you've got to get to X, You've got five. You've got to get to X. They both got to equal each other. Yeah. Um, you know, this was rated at three and a quarter. This rated at three three oh five. Yeah. There's just there's hardly zero difference there really. Correct. Um, Fifty microseconds in the tune can make up that horsepower with yeah. ease. Yeah. But with uh, with these two nozzle designs, uh, one hundred and twenty four degrees, one hundred and forty three degrees. That's where the reentrant versus uh, the stepped lip, I guess. Yeah. Uh, comes in or the open bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where 
that that makes all the difference because we're actually spraying fuel and it's burning either this way or it's burning this way, correct? Yeah. We're either burning from the outside in mm -hmm. or the inside out. Now, where... this one is inside that, out or outside so that in? one that one being the step lift design so if you take this one as a true re-entrant style okay that one should in theory burn from the outside in this one um this one so the re-entrant so the the step lift re-entrant can actually take an, a a combination of both and take it both you know take it basically both ways gotcha. now you have you have a rolled radius right here so i mean basically if you get some of that some of that really fine atomization kind of going upward, mm -hmm. then it can, in a low temperature, you know, that's not gonna be high because it's not gonna be 100% of it, but a, a small percentage of it can, can come across the top and utilize it more, which gives you more low end power because you're using more of everything efficiently gotcha. at the lower, at the gotcha. lower RPMs, the lower turbulences, and, uh, and then, then it can push down and come, you know, on this side it can go down and then back in. Chase and the then, back up. Yeah and then push back in. So with the step lip, it's kind of the better of the both worlds. It's, a, it's almost a mix between the two, mm -hmm. but not as uh, horsepower and RPM minded. Right. So whereas a true re-entrant piston is, you know, like a, a true 12 valve piston. Okay. It's yeah. it very, you know, just, it's built for low end power, right? Just right. push the piston down as hard and as violent as you can. You have a fixed, you have a fixed injector, you have fixed pressure, you have fixed timing, you know, it just, let's just get the piston down. We just gotcha. want power. Just down. all the torque, all the grunt. All the torque. I mean, yeah. and that's, you know, I mean, we started, you know, the diesel game started with that. Tractors, yeah. how much, how many, how many whatevers can I pull through a field? Yeah. Now it's, it's more of like, well, how do we utilize RPM to do that? Yeah. And so that's where you see the, the difference in the game. Um, with this one, you could almost you can almost say that there's a, probably an emission. I can almost guarantee there's an emission element to it as well. Yeah. You know, we want to we want a total and complete burn. Yep. Less less hydrocarbon, less NOx. Yep. You know. And this this piston was 04 and a half to 07, so just before DPF, SCR, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yep. So I'm sure that they were being leaned on about trying to get their gases just right. With a lot of OEMs. Um, Especially, uh, especially oh, Cummins. O three to uh, four. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Yeah, with uh, with Cummins specifically, since we're or since they are an engine producer specifically, yep. um, carbon credits always come in. So you'll see how much later they were to get into the DPF game, into the uh, final emissions treatments and stuff like that. It's not yeah. to say that they never had EGR stuff. It's just that in the Dodge application, they didn't have to push that as quickly as fast right right you know so where you see like a uh, a six liter that came into the game with egr came with variable geometry turbos to run egr mm -hmm. and you see the 06 and 07 59 had none of that basically right. it had camshaft egr built into it right. and that right. was about it gotcha so and a high swirl head which you know so uh, this piston right here is i guess before we move on before we start with that mm. or, or bouncing all around yeah. but so i've got this diamond piston Love this stuff, super badass. Love how it performs. It's very durable. Mm -hmm. uh, the people there, they make a great product, and their customer service has always been great. They're always easy to work with. You've got tons of different piston ring materials and designs to choose from with them. Mm -hmm. So I've always called them up and said, "Hey, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's how I'm gonna run the thing," and they've you know given me advice on what rings and how to use them and things like that. Yep. Now with these guys here, they've obviously got their valve reliefs cut for bigger camshafts. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, I'm just going to speak as, as layman as I can, like I don't know anything, but I've seen other brands of pistons that have very sharp edges right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why is the sharp edging a bad idea? Well, anytime you have a sharp point on anything, you have material that's basically left there. Like if you can catch your finger on it, mm -hmm. like a sharp, you know, like the edge of a knife, yep. then that's, then that's going to create a hot spot because there's material basically jetting out and gets thinner as, you know, as you, as, yep. as you get to a point, you get thinner. Yeah. And that is just like, as soon as you develop heat on a thin spot like that, that heat's just going to transfer because it's allowing heat to not shed off of it. Right. It's a, it's a, basically turning it into a welding process. Yes. Heat transfer. Yeah. And so a nice smooth radius edge is always the best because it'll shed everything heat wise off. It's a bigger area to try to catch, you know, fire, so to speak. Yeah. So, you know, any, any performance product is going to have smooth radius edges. 
so that it doesn't allow heat to build up in one specific spot. What we call stress risers yep. or stressors. Um, and a lot of times, uh, you know, you can bring this oddity into the equation. <laughs> um, you know, they did that for the same reason. And I know uh, Power Strokes and Duramax has kind of do the same thing is where they sell you a D-lipped piston, yep. which essentially turns a re-entrance style piston into a non-re-entrance style bowl. So okay. I... You know, you could almost suspect that you're going to lose a bit of drivability in that aspect, you know, because you're losing a lot of the ability for that flame front to stay in the piston to just push it down. Okay. You know, you're 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 uh, making a you know what could be a more reliable product, mm -hmm. but you're also going to there's always going to be a give and take. Right. Unless the total design of the piston was such of reliability, like the diamond piston is, yep. you're going to lose. You're going to trade one for another always. You know. So. I guess back to the diamonds right quick. Forged, mm -hmm. super high quality material, good coating, does not have steel ring lands in it. Yeah. So these aren't the proper choice for a street driven daily. Correct. Correct. This that would be those those to have a lifespan and anybody who races bigger engines or builds bigger engines will tell you that, you know, you start getting a horsepower, things start becoming sacrificial. Yeah. You know, they're gonna have a lifespan, they're gonna you know, they're not going to cooperate very nicely on the street. In fact, they could, you know, rapidly not do well. Yeah, yeah. rapidly yeah. disintegrate yeah. on the street. I mean, just so. piston ring. It's a straight cut ring. There's no taper to it. Mm -hmm. um, w without steel ring lands, piston goes up, and the piston ring is sitting on the bottom of that land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then as piston goes down, it's going to pull that ring up to the top of that land. Yeah. And if the ring is going to be harder than the piston, it's going to beat that land out real yeah. quick. And so if you if you take some of these rings and kind of see a little bit more in the ring technology, which uh, maybe we won't get so deep into that, but you have you have keystone ring style and you have um, different different shapes of the actual ring itself. So a keystone is set almost like a wedge. Mm -hmm. So when it's designed to actually roll on its edge to scrape as the piston goes up and down for yep. one sealing, two oil control and backside oil control. So oil control in the ring land itself. Then you'll have ones like uh, like this one. These ones are pretty stiff, so you can't really get them off. But they'll have a little wedge cut maybe on the top or the bottom. Yep. So that way, in in direction, they will move to the to that to that taper. So yes. either either up or down, they will flexion. Right. So those pistons are not designed or, or you know, I mean, you could put you could definitely put a keystone in there, but it just lasts to the longevity of that because there's no steel to back that as the as the ring goes up and down and flexes up and down, it's going to beat that ring land out. Yep. And that's you know part of the. Um, you know, whether they do that as just, you know, that's the way they want it or that's how their testing showed the best results, you know, or they put a straight cut ring in there and just that's what they want. Yeah. You know, that's, that's and, aftermarket. And real quick, like we're not talking crap about no. any sort of aftermarket no. racing piston. No. But when you, this is good for that example. Good example. Yeah. This piston will make 13, 1400 horse. Proven. But then it's cast. It's got yeah. steel ring lands in it. It's very durable. Yeah, uh, you're going to get 13, 1400 horse out of this thing. But if you drive it normally at 300 horse, 250 horse, you're still going to see 200,000 miles out of this.